welcome back or welcome if you are new. Um, so today I kind of was just like in a very laid back, chill, relaxed kind of mood. I'm really excited because I'm enjoying being able to put on like some warm, comfy clothes to wear around the house or when I'm out and about. You know, it's like that nice, cool fall feeling. And so I'm just really enjoying that. Like I said, very laid back today. Um, not really sure how I'm kind of feeling emotion wise. I'm really trying to just make sure that my mental health is in check, <laughs> if that makes sense. You know, just really taking care of me forcing myself to relax, forcing myself to listen to positive um, affirmations, teaches, messages, you know, whether it be um, a Christian broadcast or whether it be just something that's motivational, something that's just keeping me in a positive outlook and having a positive, upbeat spirit about myself you know and so this is just one of those days where it's like I really just I don't want to force myself to do anything that I'm really not comfortable doing I don't want to hear any type of negative or unnecessary comments coming in I don't want to surround myself with anything that is just going to unnecessarily you know mess with my peace so that's where i'm at right now but with all that being said i wanted to just kind of relax and enjoy putting on some makeup you know trying some different application techniques because um i'm typically like a beauty blender girl a sponge girl you know full coverage girl woman <laughs> that type of thing but I want to kind of explore and play around with some different techniques where I can use less complexion products, you know, just kind of trying to embrace, I guess, some of my flaws, some of my aging, you know, things like that, where I'm more so trying to just appreciate and really love how God created me as opposed to just trying to cover everything up. And that's very hard for me to do, okay? Very, very hard for me to do because I'm low-key a little bit of a perfectionist, low-key, you know, one where it's like certain things will just cause me to feel uneasy if it's not just so. So I'm working on different things, you guys, different things. And if you can relate, let me know. <laughs> Sound off in the comments if you can relate. But you know, one of the things that I am kind of like, I wouldn't say envious of, but that I really can appreciate in some other personality types or different people that I come in contact with or people that are more go with the flow, are more kind of like, you know, I'm not going to worry about this. I'm not going to stress over, you know, how this is, if this pillow is out of place or, you know, it's just certain things that... <laughs> kind of set me off you know I wish that I was more at ease with anyway I don't know how I got onto that whole topic because today we are playing with the Natasha Denona Roxa palette okay I wanted to do a purple look and so of course let's try out a new palette right so what I will say about this palette is while it's not any type of like unique color story to me, I don't even know if my camera's focusing, child. I can't see that far. So while this is not an extremely, you know, unique purple color story or, you know, theme for a palette, I mean, I've had several purple palettes over the years and a lot of them have been similar to this color story. Um, I really enjoy creating this eye look. I really, really enjoy this color story. I love how there's like some cool tone purples as well as like some kind of warmer corally shades that you can kind of incorporate with the look so it doesn't have to be so, you know, cool tone. I like that. And these shimmers are really nice and beautiful and unique. This one here in the center that it was a pretty swirl design, but you know, with me swatching it and using it, it's kind of turned into something else. But anywho, 
gorgeous palette. I really enjoyed using it. It was a very, very easy um, palette to use. Of course, Natasha Denona's formulas are very, very nice as far as I know, you know, from my use. I never have. <clears throat> I never have any issues using her palettes, but this one, sometimes purples and blues and things can be a little bit of hard to blend out and hard to build up and things like that. But this is a very, very nice formula. So I enjoyed it. But the reason why I said that I was just having a nice kind of chill, relaxed kind of day is because I just put my makeup on. I didn't talk through this, so I am going to do a voiceover. So you will hear my voice, but it's just a really, really chill makeup application type video. And you will see in the video that I am going to be using some different techniques, applying my complexion with brushes instead of sponges, um, just going in a little bit lighter, not as heavy handed and just trying some different techniques. And I will say that I do like how my uh, complexion looks. There's some things that, you know, I had to get used to. But as far as the eye look, I'll go ahead. Like I said, spoiler, I've already stated I really like this palette. No surprise. But um, you can just kind of hang out with me and see how I created this eye look. So, anywho, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are taking care of your mental health. I hope you guys are protecting your peace. And I hope most of all that you are loving on yourselves. Okay, so with that being said, let's go ahead and just jump right into this eye look. Okay, you guys, so like I said, today I will be trying out some different techniques, but I'm still starting out with a moisturizer. And the moisturizer I'm using today is my Glow Recipe banana souffle moisture cream i love this moisturizer it's very hydrating and a really nice prep before you go in with your base makeup now in addition to moisturizing i am going to prime and i'm using my ciate london watermelon burst hydrating primer this primer is very hydrating it's not mattifying or pore filling or anything like that to me, I feel like it's strictly for additional hydration to make sure your skin is going to be nice and prepped before you go in with all of your foundation and concealers. So to start out today, I'm doing something a little different. I'm going in with this Tarte Shape Tape and I'm really just wanting to kind of focus on, you know, just tapping it on those problem areas that I have on my face, you know, the dark spots, the hyperpigmentation, the under eye dark circles, <laughs> things of that nature, which typically I do go in with a concealer, um, but mainly just for my dark circles and hyperpigmentation. So today I'm kind of focusing on, you know, just all of those little dark spots around my face. And I'm going in with a brush and as you can see, I'm just spraying it a little bit so it's nice and damp. And I'm just going to blend that concealer out. And I'm taking my time with it because I don't want to blend the concealer away. I really just want to, you know, try and get as much of an even tone on my face as possible before going in with foundation because one of my goals is to try and use a lot less foundation, a lot less complexion products, just because, you know, I've recognized that as I get older, I really don't want to feel a lot of makeup on my face. I don't wanna have a lot of things clogging my pores and I kinda of want to just have a more natural look, if you know what I mean. like. I want to kind of embrace <laughs> some of my flaws if that's if that's possible when it comes to makeup because you know with makeup a lot of times we're going for that perfect that perfection that perfect base that flawless look you know so that's typically what I like to do especially being a content creator you know one who likes to take pictures and post inspiration on Instagram and things like that you know, it's like I kind of really enjoy having that flawless base, but I'm going to try and work on embracing my flaws a little bit more. 
So now that I have that blended in, that's what I'm looking like prior to my foundation. And the foundation that I'm going to be using today is this Beauty Blender. And I'm going to be using the shade Deep Pecan. And as you can see here, I'm going to just apply a very small amount to the back of my hand because I want to really control the amount that I apply to my face today. And I'm actually using that same brush and I'm just kind of, you know, taking my time applying very, very small amounts with that brush and just kind of buffing it into my face so that I can get a feel of the coverage as well as find my own comfort level when it comes to this type of application. Like I said, I am really a beauty blender type person, so I like to just go in with that sponge and apply as much foundation as possible. <laughs> but it's looking pretty good. I'm feeling good about it. So now just to go in and brighten up, you know, certain areas, the under eyes, the bridge of the nose, the forehead, and as well as the chin, I'm just going in with my Kosas concealer. And I'm just kind of really focusing that on the areas that I want to brighten. Trying not to apply too much, but still wanting to make sure I have enough applied there. So still working with that same brush. And this is something that is not common for me either. I typically go in with, you know, a lot of different brushes. You know, sometimes I even use different sponges for my foundation and concealer, but I'm just going in with that same brush and just gently blending in that concealer. And when doing this, I realize why it is that I really, really like using sponges is because it just goes quicker to me. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I feel like whenever I'm using a brush to blend in my cream products, it just takes longer for me to get it to that blend that I'm comfortable with. I guess I'll say that. So as you can see here, I didn't feel like I had enough of that concealer underneath my eyes, so I did apply a little bit more and just let it to let it sit while I go in and blend out the rest of my concealer so that it can kind of sit in place so I'm not just brushing it away. And I definitely feel like that small amount that I added helped me to conceal those under eye circles a little bit better. And I am using a smaller brush now just to uh, blend that in, just to make sure I get it in that precise area where I want it to be. Now I'm going in with my Maybelline Shine Free Loose Powder. And this one is in the shade Medium 02. And I am applying just the smallest amount of powder on this soft, fluffy brush. Underneath my eyes, I wanted to really limit the amount of powder that I apply on this base as well. So I'm really liking it. Really, really liking it. <laughs> I feel like this powder is actually quite nice when used in this manner in a very thin layer. So. Yeah, I'm just going in and making sure all of those highlighted areas are set nicely before I go in and set the rest of my face. Now to set the rest of my face, I'm using my Kiss New York Pro Touch Matte Powder Foundation. And in this one, I'm actually the shade Toffee Caramel. And I'm using a larger fluffy brush once again using the smallest amount to just apply that powder all over my face. As you can see, it is actually warming and deepening up my face because it's a little bit darker than what I would typically be using right now. This is a great powder for me for summer. So um, that's typically when I would use it, but it looks nice. As you can see, my neck is more along um, or my neck and chest area is more along the, you know, color of my face in general, but this powder works nicely to blend in with the rest of my body. <laughs> so now I'm going in with my Kosas bronzer. This is in the shade Deep, and this bronzer is not very pigmented. What I mean by that is 
when you swirl your brush as you saw like I just did, you're not picking up a lot of product. It takes a little bit of building up to get to the pigmentation that I like for bronzer. But I actually don't mind that because it's like I don't have that stress of applying too much bronzer out the gate. I can take my time and build it up. And I actually really, really love the shade of this bronzer. It blends nicely and I don't typically have a lot of issues when I use it. Next, I wanna go in with one of my ColourPop blushes. This is actually one of their lip, lip and cheek balms in the shade Verified. And once again, I'm using a brush to apply this. This blush is very balmy. As you can see, it has a little bit of a glow, a sheen to it. I don't wanna say it's sticky, but you can actually feel it. Most people would probably apply this prior to powder, you know, and then put a powder blush on top of their powder once they have already set their face. But I really don't mind doing it this way because I know that once I use my setting spray, everything is just going to kind of absorb into my face anyway. But I like this color. It's a really, really nice, soft, kind of like muted pink, you know, because it is a balm. It's not too highly pigmented, but I do like the nice flush of color that it's leaving on my cheeks today. Now I'm gonna go in and highlight with one of my Milani highlighters. This is one of their highlighter duos in Double Shot 140. And as you can see, I'm using my fingers to apply this highlighter. They are cream highlighters, so sometimes with creams I like to apply it with the tips of my fingers because I feel like the warmth from my skin kind of helps it to just kind of melt into my face, you know, and it helps me to control the application and the blend a bit better. And these highlighters are very, very pretty. As you can see, they're a gorgeous golden shade. Now moving on to this gorgeous Roxa palette from Natasha Denona. It's so pretty, you guys. I wanted to go in and just kind of swatch some of the shimmers. Well, some of the mattes too, because since I hadn't swatched it ahead of time, I really wasn't too sure how the shimmers were going to apply as well as how pigmented the mattes were. And I just wanted to kind of swatch them, show you guys see for myself, get a feel for the palette before going in and using it. And a lot of times this will be the case where I'm not that familiar with the shadows prior to using it because a lot of times I do my swatches um, after I've actually used the palette. So <laughs> yeah, today I just wanted to go ahead and get a feel for these shimmers and a feel for these mattes prior to diving into this palette. And as you can see, the shimmers are really, really pretty. The mattes really nicely pigmented. I love how she has the cool tones in there along with those warm corals. And I was really, really looking forward to creating a look with these shades. So before I get started, I wanna go ahead and prep my lids and I'm using my Morphe eyeshadow primer today. Um, I'm taking a break from my Fenty <laughs> and trying out this Morphe and it actually works rather nicely. So the first shade I'm going into is called Cerise. No, no, no. I'm sorry. It's Heather, I believe, <laughs> if I'm reading this correctly. It's a gorgeous coral shade 
and I'm just you know blending that in my crease making sure that it shows up nice and pigmented and as you can see this shadow is so smooth it is blending effortlessly <laughs> and the pigmentation is it's just beautiful So now that I have that shade placed nicely, I'm going into this beautiful cool, tone, cool toned purple, which is called Jacaranda. And I'm just focusing that in my outer crease using a small uh, blending brush and just keeping it right there in the outer corner. I am going to just gently drag it a little way into my crease not too far maybe just like a third of the way into my crease just to add that you know depth to this eye look and those two shades blend it nicely together that purple and that coral shade Now I'm going to go ahead and prep my lid with a little bit of e.l.f. glitter primer. Just using a fluffy brush to apply that all over the lid where I know I want to add the shimmer. And I can't resist this beautiful like swirled purple and silver shade. And I believe it's called Bolt. And I'm using a fluffy brush to just tap that on my lid. And typically I would go in, spray my brush and all of that, but I wanted to see how it would apply just dry. And as you can see, it is very, very pigmented. It's very smooth. And I'm just taking my time dragging that across my lid until I get the shape that I want for that shimmer. Now going back in with that purple, just what's left on the brush, I'm just kind of blending out the edge of that shimmer so it's not so choppy. And just doing that you know on both eyes and just kind of make sure making sure that they're even now I'm popping on some lashes and I'm going to move on to my lower lash line going back into that dark purple shade Jacaranda I'm just going to apply that to the lower lash line and uh, blend that in and I'm also going to add a little bit of that coral shade just to kind of make the lower lash line match my lid I decided I wanted to add some black pencil liner to my lower lash line I felt like that would just create more depth and you know drama to this eye look so that's what I'm doing here and now it's time for that inner corner so I'm going into this beautiful shade here, which is called, called Star Girl. I, as you saw, I sprayed my brush a little bit and I'm just tapping that for my inner corner highlight. Another gorgeous, beautiful, bright, <laughs> blinding inner corner pop. This shade would look absolutely gorgeous on the lid as well. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So. I'm just taking my time and blending that into that uh, lid shade, just making sure that it's nice and cohesive and not choppy. So for my lashes, I'm using my Sephora Big By Definition Waterproof Mascara. Even though I have on falsies, I want to blend my natural lashes into those falsies. And I'm applying it to my lower lash line as well as you can see here. I really like this mascara. I would definitely repurchase it. I feel like it adds length and volume to my lashes. Now for my lips, I'm just going in with one of my ColourPop lip liners. And I wanted to do kind of like a dusty, dusty, rosy, purpley type lip. So I went in with that lip liner and I'm going on top of that with one of my NYX Powder Puff Lippies and the applicator for this lippy is kind of strange because it is an actual puff so it's not the easiest to apply 
but this is the shade best buds and i just felt like it was a nice you know color for this eye look now i did decide to go in with a little bit more blush so i'm using my clarity blush in the shade mulberry rose just to kind of bring a little bit more of that purple vibe into my face and i feel like this color goes beautifully with this eye look and the Clarity Cosmetics blushes are nicely pigmented. So let me know what you guys think. How do you think I did with applying less complexion products? I think I did pretty good and I'm looking forward to doing it again in the future. So that's it you guys for today's video. I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me to create this eye look and I look forward to seeing you on my next video. Toodles!